Hey everyone, in this video we are going to go over 11 prompts that you can use to automate your prospecting research on an account level as well as a person level. I've spent probably around the last five hours getting these prompts right, making sure we have all of the data together for them, and I'm extremely excited to show all of this data to you. Now before we get into it, uh, this is automating your account research at scale. A lot of these still need a couple tweaks, but otherwise a lot of them are ready to ship inside of emails immediately. And so I'll try to call those things out as we're going through it because I want everyone to get the best information that we can possibly get. So we have this list of websites over here that we are constantly looking for and we use Clay to be able to enrich the company because a lot of the times we're doing the prompting based off of the company description that is from their LinkedIn profile. We have another list of leaders at the company, which I will potentially blur out uh, so that we'd be able to post this in other places and not get it banned. But anyway, this tool is clay.com, which is finding all of this information for us. And then we have integrated OpenAI into the tool to be able to deduct all of the information from here. So we have the website, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the mission of the company. How could we deduct what is the actual mission of the company? So the prompt that we use here is we used the uh, OpenAI prompt here to say, what is the mission of the company using this input? The input is, and then we're using the LinkedIn company description that we found from their LinkedIn company page. Be specific and use keywords in the description not normally found in other companies. Keep the output under six words and make the output conversational slash casual. Complete this prompt. I was on your LinkedIn company page and it looks like you're focused on blank. And then we get into it. And so immediately a couple things that have to get fixed here is I know that sometimes it says I was on your LinkedIn company page and it looks like you're focused on and then it'll have the output and then sometimes it won't have the output. Easy change. I'm not worried about that. But if we look at these companies, Canva on revolutionizing design, nailed it. Calendly, streamlining meeting scheduling, nailed it. Loom, work communication with video, nailed it. Bitwarden, empowering secure collaboration with open source password management, nailed it. Clay.com, improve business analytics automation, nailed it. Notion, create an inclusive workspace, nailed it. Salesforce, connecting companies and customers for good, nailed it. All of them, nailed it. So, uh, and then liquid death, eliminating plastic with hashtag murder your thirst. Okay, great, nailed it. Uh, moving on to the next one. Let's bring our website so that we can keep them all together. Here, what we are trying to do is we are trying to make a inference about who does this company usually sell to? Who are the ideal customer profiles that this company usually sells to? And so our prompt in this situation was, again, taking the LinkedIn company description and saying, what is the job title that has the that this company usually sells to using the input as a guide for what they do? The input is this. Who gets most value out of the product and what is their usual job title? Give up to three job titles. Do not include any numbers or extra information, just a comma separated list of titles. Maybe a little bit of over prompting, but let's take a look at this. Canva, graphic designer, visual designer, creative designer. Nailed it. Calendly, scheduling, coordinating, meeting coordinator, event planner. Nailed it. Loom.com, product manager, excuse me, communication manager, team leader. Nailed it. Notion, project management. Nailed it. Salesforce, sales executive. Nailed it. HubSpot. Customer success, sales representative, again, nailed it. Red Bull, executive entrepreneur marketer. All right, that's funny. Uh, Lime, urban planner, transportation management, sustainability, mo sustainable mobility director. Yeah, nailed it. Okay, I don't know about you, but we're moving on. That was a good one. Okay, so this is a really fun one here as well. In this prompt, what we did is I used a Google search in order to find the pricing page of the companies. It's a really quick the, what we have here is we were just looking at the website and I wanted to see any of the URLs that mentioned pricing and I wanted to put in the dollar sign. And this was in order to find companies at uh, the pricing of the uh, company on the page so that the Google snippet would give us the pricing. And so see how it gives us the pricing right here. And so we can just deduct over here what the pricing is. And so in this case, we kept it very specific. I just wanted I wanted it to tell me the pricing, and then I also wanted to know if it was manual or if it was annual, uh, not manual, if it was monthly or if it was annual pricing. So again, here is our uh, prompt, and then these were some of the answers that we got. So again, Canva, $12.99, nice. Loom, $12.50. Calendly, always free. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Loom, $12.50. Bitwarden, $3.60. Yep. Clay, they got us. Yep. Uh, Notion, a little bit of a miss. I'm going to call that out completely here. Uh, Salesforce, not totally sure. HubSpot, this looks pretty correct. 
uh, Red Bull and Liquid Death, no pricing pages, of course, and you know th those kinds of things. So this is obviously an inference from the, the Google page. So this data is as good as the data that you give it, obviously, but still pretty dang good. So now let's move to our next one. So in our next category, what we were doing is we took a look at the job title of the LinkedIn profiles that we found at the company. And what we were doing is we were trying to find what is the focus of these job titles. And I think there might be a better one in another place. Ah, yes. Nope, never mind. So what we did is we took the, the job title and we basically said, okay, hey, here's the prompt. Tell me what the focus of this person's role based on the title name and input, be specific and casual. The title name is this, the input is this, complete this prompt with the tasks they are responsible for in under six words. As the title, I'd imagine you focus on blank. And so we got leading, organizing and strategizing, directing technical strategy and leading product development creating and leading, developing software. Uh, this was for the CTO. I can get you there. I think I might've accidentally deleted their titles. So I could get that again, uh, more towards the end of the video, but we'll, we'll keep this going on. Anyway, I assure you that this one was pretty much nailing everybody's job focus. Uh, if you put in an accountant there, it was going to talk about, you know, organizing the financials of the business. It, it was very good for what they were focused on. The next one that we're going to look at is we are going to summarize a company's news articles or their announcements based off of their domain. And so we use the predict leads feature over here and we found all of the relevant news articles about the company. And basically we just needed to use the title. Sometimes the main body of the article was too much data for OpenAI to ingest. So we were just using the title of the article instead. So we have all of these events and I just took the first event. And so we'll see Canva launches AI feature, Calendly hires a CMO, Notion launches an AI feature, Bitwarden launches a new product, uh, Loom launched two new features, and let's take a look at the completion. Uh, basically, the prompt that I wanted to use was using the input, complete my prompts using keywords specific to the news article, complement them on their findings of the article, keep it very short and casual, make sure to leave out corporate jargon, Shorten company names when applicable. Don't make any reference to the time of the article being published. The input is the news article. Complete this prompt. I saw the recent news article about, and then it goes into it. So I saw the recent news article about Canva's new AI feature. Great work. About Calendly hiring Jessica as a chief marketing officer. Awesome. I saw the recent news article about your launch. Congrats on the success of new Loom features. Uh, congrats on the Bitwarden's pat pad passwordless.dev beta program. Uh, Notion's AI tool being launched. And these were obviously blank, so this was a little odd. This one, Liquid Death receiving uh, Series C funding. Congrats. Red Bull launching Zane Maloney. Congrats. That's awesome news. What is that? Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, it's the F3 competition there. So anyway, that we have a OpenAI summarization of what happened in the article. Keep going. Now we can also, so here what we're doing is we are inferring what is the possible problem that a company is trying to solve by hiring the person that they're trying to hire, right? And so we have all of these job openings listed by the domains, and I only pulled out one of them. And so you could see we have account executive, CX advocate, accountant, head of go to market operations, all of these things. The prompt that we gave it is essentially, I wanted to be able to say, okay, hey, you're hiring for this position. That usually means that the company is trying to do something. And so the prompt we have is tell me what problem this company is trying to solve based on the open job that is listed in the input. Keep it short and be specific based on what that job title is known to be tasked with in a company. The input is this, which is the job title. Complete this prompt. I saw your company was hiring for a job title. In my experience, this means you're trying to improve the company's what? So let's take a look at some of these. Remember, we got Canva, Calendly, and Loom coming up first. So I saw your company was hiring for a account executive. In my experience, this means you're trying to improve the company's international sales and customer relations by finding someone with knowledge of both German and English. Awesome line. What do we got here? They're hiring for a full stack engineer. 
And this means that you want to improve the company's technology infrastructure and develop more efficient web applications using Python. Awesome. Hiring for a CX advocate. What do you want to do with the company? You want to improve its customer experience. Awesome. Accountant, what do you want to do with the company? Uh, make sure the financial accuracy and record keeping is all in good order. Uh, let's see. Field sales manager, Richmond. You want to improve the company's sales performance in Richmond area. You get the idea. We nailed it on this one, too. So moving on. This is another question that we get asked all the time. Can we deduct if a company is B2B or B2C? So here we're going to use the LinkedIn company description again. I will call out that this one, I would say 95% of the time, is really right. There's a couple times that you might have some misses, but this is an inferred uh, you know, piece of information, so it's pretty good. And really, I'm calling out Facebook right here. I'm calling it out on myself. I don't know why it put B2B. You could see the prompt, and somebody suggest me if there's a better prompt out there. So I'm telling it straight up. A B2B company is a company that sells to other companies. A B2C company is a company that sells to consumers. Using the input, tell me if the company is likely a B2B company or a B2C company. The input is this, like I said, the LinkedIn company description. The only acceptable output is either B2B or B2C. Do not answer in any other way. And as you can see, we got Canva, B2C. They're a very prosumer SaaS. I would take that. Calendly, B2B, nailed it. Loom, B2B, nailed it. Bitwarden, B2B, Notion, B2B, Salesforce, HubSpot, B2B, Liquid Death, B2C, nailed it. Red Bull, B2C, Lime, B2C, nailed it. Target, B2C, Walmart, B2C, Gong.io, B2B, 100 Coaches, B2B, Forbes, B2B, Sweetgreen, B2C. And then we have a couple ones. So I would even say Forbes is probably more like a B2C, but I mean, who they sell, sell to is they provide services for businesses on advertising dollars. Maybe the argument could be made for Facebook. Anyway, for the most part, it nails this far better than doing all of the work yourself. I would keep it going. All right. So actually, this one has nothing to do with the websites. Um, in Clay, as the, today is January uh, 21st, 2023. We are going to release next Monday a uh, feature where you will be able to scrape somebody's LinkedIn posts, either LinkedIn posts based off of a keyword or LinkedIn posts that are the last 10 LinkedIn posts that they have. So what I did is I copied and pasted some of those outputs into this table. And I basically want to summarize the LinkedIn post. And so you'll see my prompt here. Use the input to complete my prompt in under eight words. Keep the output short and use specific keywords from the post. These are social media posts by other people, and I would just like to know the main idea of each post. The input is this, LinkedIn post. Complete this prompt. I just wanted to reach out because I saw your post about blank. So let's take a look. This one is a post I wrote. Only 2% of LinkedIn users are getting access to a list uh, that are most engaged, and the rest are settling. This is basically talking about how if you post on LinkedIn, you'll start getting people to view your profile, and those are the best people to reach out to. I just wanted to reach out because I saw your post about LinkedIn's most engaged prospects. Awesome. Uh, there are two hard parts about go to market that become much easier once you reorient your thinking. I just wanted to reach out because I saw your post about GTM and problem framing. Awesome. Customer appreciation should be a daily practice, but today get to know your customers day is an opportunity to go the extra mile. Okay. I saw your post about showing customer appreciation. This is actually a post based off of Uber's company page. So this works for person pages and company pages. Let's see. Uh, Career compounding is magical. This is just one of the career lessons I found out by sitting down with Uber CEO, Dara. What was the post about? Building your career over time. This one, I was asking people to take 20 seconds and vote for the Golden Kitty Award for Clay. What was the post about? Clay's Golden Kitty nomination. You get the idea? Pretty much we're nailing it again over here. All right, another problem that I see all the time. Whoop, we got to refresh. Another problem that I see all the time is people will put crazy things into their titles. And so when you put these things into your titles, I, it's if I use this in an email, you know that I took this from your LinkedIn page and I scraped it. I didn't actually manually do the research. And so what I built was a AI uh, prompt to clean these titles. So let's take a look at the prompt before we take a look at the results. Using the input, Clean the job titles from unimportant information and keep the most important part of the job title. Oftentimes, people list two job titles, say things like we're hiring, or they put seniorities in weird places. Clean the input to include the main job title, the input. 
And then we just have the titles to be cleaned. So let's see. Growth marketer. We're hiring. Growth marketer. Account executive. German and English. Account executive. This one, uh, we didn't get it on this one. Chief strategy officer and global uh, development officer. It kept it the same. That's fine. This person, management consultant, author, professional speaker, lean and continuous improvement. Management consultant, professional speaker. Definitely an improvement from just sending them that title. CEO, YCW2022. CEO, founder and CEO. CEO, digital marketing coordinator, director. Digital marketing director. Senior vice president, vice president. And so you can pause the video and keep looking through all these. But again, we pretty much nailed it. Uh, again, now... We, what we tried to do with this one, and this one didn't work as well. I didn't even, I'm making a blog post about this and I didn't even include it in the blog post. Basically, I asked AI to read a job description and tell me if the job it pays salary or if it pays hourly. For the salary, it worked really well. And then it seems like the invalid input and the no valid outputs are the hourly ones. Like if you read it, it, it will have the hourly ones, but it, uh, for some reason, it doesn't output it here. And so I kind of let that one rest. So we will just move on from that one pretty quickly. This one is one of my favorites. All the time, we have a problem of finding out which companies are actually SaaS companies. Because if you are a SaaS company that sells to real estate agents, you will say on your LinkedIn company page that you are in the real estate industry, but you will not tell anybody that you're a SaaS company. So I built a AI prompt to tell us, is this a SaaS company or not? And this is all based off of their LinkedIn company description. So it's not really hard data to find. So let's check out the prompt. And our prompt is, is the company in the input a software as a service company? A software as a service? Oh, I even spelt it wrong and it still worked. A software as a service company is a company that offers a software usually for a monthly or annual. Wow. Subscription to multiple users providing them with a service. The input is this, company description. Only return as a result as true if it is a software as a service company or false if it is not a software as a service company. So we're gonna save these changes and let's take a look at the results. Canva, true, nailed it. Calendly, true. Loom, true. Bitwarden, candidly, I have no clue why it didn't say Bitwarden was a SaaS company. Clay, true. Notion, true. Salesforce, true. HubSpot, true. Liquid Death, false. Excellent. Red Bull, false. Lime, false. Excellent. Acme, Target. Walmart, ShopRite, false. Gong.io, true. 100 Coaches, Forbes, false. Excellent. Uh, these next three companies, false. Excellent. Xavier, nailed it. YouTube and Facebook. I thought this was one of the most interesting ones. They said it was false, which is perfect. I would not consider YouTube and Facebook a SaaS company, but it still nailed it. So that is awesome. And rounding out one of our last ones, OpenAI is also really good at taking unstructured bodies of text and then dropping it into structured bodies of text. So what we did is we automated a Google search to find the Glassdoor reviews of a company. This is very simple. All we did was cite Glassdoor.com, the company name, and then I just typed has an overall rating so we can make sure that was inside of the snippet. And so see how we have, you know, Canva has an overall rating of 4.5 out of 5. Bitwarden has an overall rating of 4.7 out of 5. But see how this isn't in the same place as here? So if we were to just try to say, if we were to just use a regular expression and say, give me the first number in this description. Well, here it's going to get you 4.5, but over here it's going to get you 19. So we created an open AI prompt to structure this unstructured data. Very simple. Using the input, tell me what the company review of the company is. Only return numerical value, no words. The input is, and then we took the Google snippet. And look at this, 4.5, 4.5, 3.9, 3.9, 3.5, 3.5, 4.7, 4.7, 3.6, You get the picture. So if you are a salesperson, a founder, a marketer, anybody that's trying to do account level research on your prospects, and it is taking a lot of time, here are 11 AI prompts that you can use in order to shorten that time. And a lot of these are ready to go to be start uh, using in your outbound messaging. I had a lot of fun building this video. If you have any questions about this, reach out to myself. My name is Eric Noslowski, or you can reach out to the Clay team. Uh, also, you can join our Slack channel, which is clay.com backslash Slack, where you'd be able to get more information about doing these kinds of things. Again, I really had a lot of fun making this video, and I hope you got a lot of value out of it. Have a great day, everyone.